so uh, we've had uh, Pastor Gary and Pastor Kim and Dwight and Donna. They came uh, late, late Thursday. Uh, what time did you arrive? It was in, okay, so it was, all, it was actually Friday early in the morning. So either way, it was right around that time. Uh, and it was, and we've been just spending time together and we've been enjoying each other's company and, and uh, Pastor Gary and the, all of them have been pouring into us and we've just had a really good time enjoying food and fellowship and, and just, just getting to know each other and really forming relationship. We haven't had a lot of time together, so these times are very special. So I encourage you all, during the lunch, go up and talk to them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they, <laughs> they would love to talk to you, and if you have any questions, they would love to answer your questions as well. So now, Pastor Gary and, and Pastor Kim are the co-founders of Life Church International. Now, I just want to say, and I, I don't remember half the places you guys have gone to. It's just they, they have arms and legs that go on forever, okay? They've just been everywhere in, in the world. They've been to Belize. They've been to Scotland. They've been to just, I'll let Gary tell you all of those places that he's been. So, but it's, it, it, there's so much wisdom and so much knowledge and so much of uh, the Holy Spirit in them, and they have so much to offer. And we are just so pleased to be partnered with you. And, and to have you here and, to pouring, and pouring into us is such a privilege and such an honor. And we just really thank you all for that. And we thank you for, especially for bringing your close friends like Dwight and Don. I'll just tell you a little bit about them. They have been friends with, with Pastor Gary and Kim for about 30, uh, 27 years. Okay. So going on 30 years, like that's a, that's a long friendship. Like they, they must be okay people if they've hung around for 27 years. All right, with them, and they've kind of walked very closely with them as well. Uh, they're kind of like their their spiritual armor, you know. They just they hold them up, they 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 help them, they pour into them, they pour into each other, and we need that. We need that, right? This is this is important, and we need to model this here at City Gate Church as well. So we're looking forward to all of the things that you have to pour into us everything. And we're looking forward to not just today, but we're looking forward to a relationship that we're going to build from today onward. Amen? Okay. And that may even mean that we go out there sometimes. Now, I'm not saying like the whole church, <laughs> uh, but I'm going. <laughs> we'll, we'll figure it all out. We'll see. But let me, let me say this. If you really want to, and you want to learn, you want to grow, we'll make a way. Amen? All right. Okay, well, I'm not going to keep talking because you don't need to hear me. You hear me all the time. I want to invite Pastor Gary to come up. Come on. I want you to reach out your hands to this man. And I just, want to, I just want to pray for him right now. Father, we just bless this mighty man of God. Father, we thank you for him. We thank you for the wisdom that you've imparted into him. We thank you, Father, for all of the amazing things that you've done in his life and, and in Pastor, Kim, Pastor Kim's life as well, Lord. And just the things that you're pouring into City Gate Church as well because of it, Father. We, we, we receive selfishly in this area, Lord, but we want you. We want so much of you. And, and, Lord, we thank you for using Pastor Gary to do that. And, and, Lord, we just bless him, and we bless him what he's going to share today, Father, and we just receive it 100%. Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Wow, come on. How many love Jesus this morning? Isn't that great? Come on. Hallelujah. It's so good to be back in the house. I tell you what, if I lived in Stratford, I'd be coming to this church. Come on. I, I love coming here. You guys are awesome. And uh, yeah, we're gaining five pounds easily. Praise God. <laughs> it's a, wow. I, I don't know. I, uh, I haven't ate that much in a long time. And, and I hear we're not done yet. So we're going we're gonna, to, I will persevere. I, I'll, I'll get to praise God. Yeah. <laughs> so it's awesome. And, and thank you so much for being a part of our international network. It's, it's awesome. We're uh, right now uh, at all the places uh, Pastor Jerry was talking about. We have churches up and running. But right now, uh, you're part of uh, helping launch a church in uh, St. Albert, uh, Alberta, just outside of Edmonton. We've got a, a church plant going there. 
Pastors John and Lass uh, are there uh, starting a work. Uh, we have another one going in Prince Albert, Saskatchewan, uh, that uh, was doing well before the COVID. They were doing ministry into the prisons, and uh, they were helping to um, uh, minister to the prisoners. They do about three services a week in the prisons, and then uh, ministering to the families on the outside, and then helping prisoners get uh, um, reintegrated back into society when they got out. And uh, they were doing a great work uh, so well that the government offered them a chaplaincy job into the prisons. And then COVID hit, and they locked it down, and we haven't been able to get back in the prisons since. So, so our Prince Albert Church, pray for them. Uh, they basically had to start all over and uh, you know, re, rebrand and re kind of figure out what they're doing. And uh, the pastor, he's, he's Pastor Steve is, is all pastor. And, uh, you know, pastors, it's hard for pastors when that kind of stuff happens because you go, oh, Lord, here it goes. But his wife, Kelly, is an evangelist, and she just went downtown just, was it last week, and led seven people to the Lord. She just, <laughs> she said, we're going to rebuild this thing and just keep going. So anyway, you're a part of, of that one, and uh, we're only uh, a week or two away from launching another church in Calgary. Uh, we've got a couple down there that used to be our kids youth pastor years ago and uh, they're going to launch another church for us in Calgary, Alberta. So praise God and uh, it is an exciting time that we're in. Hallelujah, Jesus. And um, I was something else I wanted to say. Hmm, what was it? Well, I don't know. But anyway, it's just, it's, it's gone. It'll come back, I'm sure. Can I drop this down a little bit? I'm uh, somebody that was using it was taller than me. That's just fine, thank you. And if it's not right, my bifocals don't work right, so it's all just blurry, so it's part of, part of getting old. Oh, I know what I was going to say. So this morning, uh, our daughter Jen, uh, our youngest uh, child, uh, uh, became the executive pastor of our Fort Saskatchewan location in Alberta, where Kim and I pastor. And uh, today is the first day she's running the church by herself and uh, leading, the, leading the team. So she's, uh, she's preaching today and, and leading the whole service. So this is her first day without Papa in the house. So uh, it's, uh, it's awesome. Keep her in prayer. She was, uh, she's good at it. She'll, do, she'll have a great day, but praise God. Father, pray now, God, that your word would just come through the way that you laid it upon my heart, God. And, Father, that your word wouldn't return void, but, God, it would do something, God. We, don't, we didn't come to church to, just to be uh, entertained, God. We didn't come to church to have our ears tickled. We come to church to change our life, God. That, God, that we'd be changed from the inside out. And, Father, as we change and all that we become and all that we do, let it be to your glory and honor and praise. And we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. I want to talk to you today, message, I, I, I've never preached this message, so I don't know how it's going to go. If it, if it sucks, well, I apologize. But God gave me a word, and, and uh, I loved uh, Mac and all the team. You did a beautiful job in worship this morning, guys. Wasn't it nice? That, where's, uh, where's our saxophone? Our saxophone. I love that thing, man. Go. You ever thought of Alberta? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I would arm wrestle you for it, but I'd probably lose, so I'm, I'll just let that one go. Praise God. Anyways, I'm a, I was uh, prepared to come down here. A lot of times when we're traveling, you know, you've got all these messages you've preached through the years, and you just pull one out, and you've, it seems to fit. But I really felt that uh, God had a word for this particular day just for you. And then Mac led off that song, The Waymaker. And even when, how's the words go? Even when we don't see it, he's working. And we, when we don't feel it, he's working. How many believe that this morning? See, amen. See, so I want to I speak to you today a message that I've entitled, I will see what I believe. I will see what I believe. In the natural world, we say, well, I'll believe it when I see it. You ever said that? I've said that many times through the years. Oh, I'll believe that when I see it. But how many know now that you can't even believe it when you see it? 
You're watching YouTube and all these Facebook things. You're going, I don't know. I, I see all the Photoshop and all the stuff they can do nowadays, and they can put somebody else's lips where yours are and make you say all kinds of things. And I, I, and I, so even when you're watching it, you know, Kim and, I, Kim and I love movies, and we go to movies, and how many, how many just are amazed at the computer graphics and, the, you know, the green screens they do, and, and you can't tell... Uh, reality from from uh, the computer generated stuff, and then you watch the documentaries of how they how they did the movie, and they're actually just in a room with green screens, and there's actually no no dinosaurs, no nothing around them after all, you know. So, but it looks real. You can't tell. So so even when we can see it nowadays, we still can't believe it because <laughs> we don't know if it's really really real. But we used to say it all the time. I'll believe it when I see it. But you know, even as Christians, we do that. We, uh, we tend to want to see it before we believe it. And God says, no, no, we walk by faith, not by sight. So God, you know, so we want to see it. We say, oh, yeah, there's people, the lame will walk, the blind. I'll believe that when I see it, you know. And, and that's been kind of human nature throughout history. There was a guy by the name of Thomas in the Bible that you might remember. Thomas, he, he didn't believe. Even when Jesus appeared and stood right in front of him, Thomas still couldn't believe. So Jesus says, Thomas, you know, take your fingers and put it into my side here where, where the, where, where the uh, uh, you know, he was cut from on the cross there. And, and he says, put your fingers in here. Touch my hands. Touch my wrist. So he was helping Thomas to believe. Even if, Thomas said, oh, I, I'll believe if I see. But look what Jesus said to him. John chapter 20, verse 29. Jesus says, Thomas, because because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen but have believed. And I tell you what, that's me. So I'm a blessed man. I don't know about you. But I'm a blessed man because I live up to that scripture. Blessed is he who believes without seeing. And I'm going, that's me. I, I, there's lots of things in our ministry that we, we could talk about that we have seen, and it's been awesome. But I believe things that I haven't seen. I've prayed for people that are, that in, in wheelchairs. I've prayed for things, and I have yet to have a, a, a mass crusade where people are coming out of the wheelchairs, you know, the, the, the lame walk. I've prayed for people with eyesight problems, and I've yet to see that somebody with, with totally blind since birth or lay hands on them and they come alive and they can see again. Well, I, 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 I haven't seen it in my ministry, but I've read about it. I've had friends tell me about it that's happened when they've done crusades. So I, I don't have to see it to believe it. I'm believing it already. Come on, somebody. I, 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 the, the, the Bible talks about people being raised from the dead. I hear that happens in places like China. There are people are getting raised from the dead. And I say, well, I, I haven't seen that, but that doesn't mean I can't believe it. Come on, somebody. I, just because I haven't seen it. So I'm a blessed man. <laughs> I'm a blessed man in the ministry because I will believe something that I haven't seen yet. So I believe, but I go, well, how come? Well, because I read my Bible. And when I read in the Bible and it says that there was a time where a donkey talked. Like, I mean, what a stupid story in the Bible. Why would that be so inspirational? Why would God put that? In that? There was a donkey that talked. God says, you know, I'm just going to do this. This will be kind of cool. Watch this. And, and there, there was a donkey that talked. There was a virgin that had a child. There's, there's a dead man that walked out of a tomb and, and, and lived again. And, and, and I believe that all this is possible so I can minister because I choose to believe the stories of the Bible, the accounts of the Bible. I, can, I choose to accept it as truth. Truth. I I can minister from the realms of possibilities. I don't have to minister to you today based on what I have seen or what I've experienced because that limits God. He can only work through what I've seen and what I've experienced, but I don't have to, I don't have to minister from that. I can minister from the realms of the possibilities because I believe that the man came out of the tomb. I believe the virgin had a child. I believe the donkey talked. Come on, somebody. And, and so we can minister from the realms of possibilities even though I haven't seen it yet. So here's the thing. 
You want me to pray for you today? Pray for a miracle? Pray for it? You need somebody just to believe with you for something that seems totally impossible? I'm your man. Hallelujah. Because I will believe that it's possible even if I have never seen it yet. And God points out to us that sometimes our natural wisdom and knowledge gets in the way of living a supernatural life. We allow logic and reason to get out in front of faith. And, or we get so full of knowledge that we have to be able to see it and understand it before we can believe it. But when we live by faith, hallelujah, Jesus, when we live by faith, we don't just believe what we see. We will see what we believe. Not just believe in what we see. We, can see, we will see what we believe. The Bible teaches us that we don't have to chase after signs and wonders. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. He said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, and he who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those that believe. In my name, they'll cast out demons, they'll speak with new tongues, they'll take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it'll by no means hurt them. They'll lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Somebody just say amen to that. See, here's the thing. Believers don't have to chase after the signs and wonders. Come on, the signs and wonders follow those that believe. Do we have any believers in the house today? Come on. See, you, we don't have to chase after it. We, human nature is to, oh, I hear there's miracles happening down the street or in the next town or there's all this supernatural stuff. So we run to this crusade, we run to this conference, we run after it, and we're chasing after the signs. And God says, no, 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 no. You don't have to chase after the signs. You don't have to follow the signs, the signs will follow those that believe. Come on. And if we've got believers in the house, you're prepared. Oh, that's an atmosphere for miracles to take place because signs and wonders follow those who believe. You will see what you believe. And many times we allow wisdom to replace revelation. We get wisdom in there. We're, we're in, a, in a culture of knowledge and culture of we want to learn, we want to grow, and that's awesome. It's wonderful. We should learn. We should grow. But sometimes we allow wisdom to replace revelation. But, but here's the thing. True wisdom, godly wisdom, is only good if it serves the revelations. Come on. See, if you get, you get human wisdom, you get wisdom, you see all the stuff that we learn from life experiences we study and we grow and all that stuff. If, if we allow, if we're led by natural wisdom, it'll lead us away from the supernatural presence of God. And it not only leads us away, but it limits God according to what we learn, what we know, what we experience. So wisdom, godly wisdom, always serves the revelations. Come on. The Bible is full of revelation. Wisdom helps us to align to the revelation that we get. Hallelujah, Jesus. So by faith, we believe what we don't see yet. But we use wisdom to properly align to the revelation so that we eventually see what we're believing because the wisdom serves the revelations. Hallelujah. But we have to get an understanding of proper application of the Word of God into our life. Otherwise, we end up doing stupid things. You ever know any Christians that just do stupid things? And, and they say, well, I'm just, a, I'm just a man of faith. No, you got a spirit of stupid. And I, here's, a, here's something that I figured out. You can't cast out a spirit of stupid. <laughs> you got to learn and grow. You know, so, you know, people, but anyway, we, we have to use wisdom or, uh, about how to apply the revelation or we'll do stupid things. Because here's the thing. The Bible teaches us all kinds of stuff that we need to use wisdom for. How many know the Bible says we're to soar like the eagles? Well, I, let me tell you something. If you don't let wisdom serve that revelation and you say, well, God says we're going to soar like eagles and you jump off a cliff, you're going to find out there's other laws that God has put in there, one called gravity. Hallelujah, Jesus. <laughs> Come on. 
So wisdom has to serve the proper application of the revelation, but wisdom, natural wisdom, can't get out on front because it limits the fullness of what God can do. Hallelujah, Jesus. So wisdom serves the revelation, and it keeps us from using extreme faith, doing things that God never really told us to do. So by faith, we can say this. What we believe can't be limited by what we see. What we believe needs to have no limitations. So what we believe can't be limited by what we see. Because if I limit God according to what I see, what I understand, we're only going to get, we're boxing God in. But by allowing wisdom to serve a revelation, we can add this. We say, but what we see through wisdom can't be ignored by what we believe. I see through wisdom. If I jump off a cliff, I can pretty much tell you what's going to happen. If I Come on. Unless God does something supernatural, if I step out of the boat, I know what's going to happen. I, and I don't swim that well. So I can get revelation, but I can balance it and let wisdom serve the revelation and apply it properly to my circumstance. Hallelujah, Jesus. But here's the thing. I, I, I wonder sometimes about all of us, me included, but many in the body of Christ, we do extreme acts of faith. We think, well, you know, God will, God will move if I just do something even more radical than what I did yesterday, and we get more extreme in our acts of faith. In some ways, I think we're just trying to almost force God to say, God, you know, I'm going to do this, and you're going to have to come through. It's an act of faith. It's, I, I'm just going to, I'm going to, whatever. And we, we do extreme acts of faith, but here's the thing. Strong faith is not developed in extreme actions. Strong faith doesn't come from just doing more and more extreme things. Strong faith comes from your relationship with Jesus. <laughs> Come on. It's not your acts of faith hoping God will do something. It's strong faith comes from how much I know him and how much I trust him. So, so strong faith is a byproduct of relationship with Jesus. Hallelujah. So the way we see God is the way that we respond to God. If you see God as small, then your faith will always be small. But if you see God in the way that we sing about God, he's the way maker. Nothing's impossible. Even if we don't see it, we don't understand it, he's still working, he's doing. Nothing is impossible for our God. If you see our God as a big God, as Jesus, as the creator of heaven and earth, and we say, well, nothing is impossible, so in his name I will see what I believe in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And here's even from my personal life. See, I, I, I'm on a journey, and, and, and in my journey of the faith that I use today, I didn't get there by extreme acts of faith and God confirmed it. No, no. I got to the faith that I'm, I'm at today through a process of elimination. Because when you think about Jesus, and you think, well, who is this Jesus? Well, you've got about three options. He was, uh, he was either a liar or a crazy person? I mean, who would do what he did and declare what he declared if he was? <laughs> so he's either lying about who he was, or he was a crazy person. He was wacko, or he was who the Bible says he is. Come on. And so when I, when I stop and think about it, I can just use logic and reason, let the wisdom serve the revelation and say, well, something inside of me doesn't uh, think it's a good idea to say that Jesus was a liar. Yeah, it doesn't seem to sit right. Uh, yeah, it's just wisdom. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, something doesn't seem to sit right when I think about, well, I think Jesus was just crazy. Yeah, I mean, he was a lunatic. He was on something, man. He was just, no, yeah, no, that doesn't sit right either. So, well, if he wasn't a liar and he wasn't crazy, well, then logic would tell me that I guess he is who the Bible says he is. And I can settle it in my spirit, not because I did extreme acts of faith, not because I experienced some supernatural revelation, not because of anything I even understand. I just logic to look and say, well, well, he's not a liar and he's not crazy, so I guess he is who he is, and I guess I should put my trust in him because the Bible says he is, come on, come on. So all my doubts went away. The unbelief was replaced 
by just simply coming to a conclusion. And then when I come to that conclusion that he's Lord, settled it in my spirit, then I can just go, well, you know, I think he knows some things I don't know. I, I, I think he's a little smarter than me. I, I think he can do some things that I've never seen before, and I don't understand how he does it. So, so I, okay, a donkey talked. Okay. All right. I, 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 what, oh, Lord. So I can put my trust in him because I've decided, I've settled it, that he is Lord, the creator of heaven and earth. But how many know even after you settle the fact that Jesus is Lord, you can settle that in your heart, but you still have to come to terms with things that seem absolutely impossible. Jesus is Lord, but then there's so much stuff that your mind just can't grab a hold of, and you have to be able to come to terms with the things that seem impossible in order for you to, by faith, grab a hold of the things that are probable. There's lots of things in the Bible and lots of things about God and eternity and life itself that my little mind just can't comprehend. Lots of things that I had to just simply make a decision and say, you know what? I don't understand it. But the Bible says in Proverbs, a little bit of wisdom, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Come on. So I had to just come to terms. It wasn't that I got revelation. It wasn't that I saw something that confirmed it. I just simply had to make a choice. Jesus is Lord and he knows things that I don't know. He can do some things that I can't do. And if he needed me to understand it, he would have told me. Hallelujah. If he wanted wanted my opinion, he would have asked me before he did it, but apparently he didn't. He just went, come on, somebody. And I had to just come to terms with, I'm serving a God that I can't even fully understand. I can't fully comprehend. I couldn't, I couldn't understand it even if he told me. Come on. That's the thing with eternity. That's the thing of the vastness of our God. Even if he took the time to explain it to us, our mind would go, I don't get it. I don't understand. So come on. So we have to just come to terms and say, you know what? I am going to believe this thing. I'm going to accept it as truth, not because I understand it, not because I've experienced it. I'm going to believe it simply because I trust Jesus, nothing else. I trust the name of Jesus. And if Jesus says it, I'm I'm just going to choose to believe it. Whether I understand it or not is irrelevant. Hallelujah. If he says it, it's truth. Come on. So if he says it, and I, I, I'm just going to simply believe it, and I will see what I choose to believe. Oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> just going to take him at his word. But Jesus, what do you say? Well, just got to believe the word, Pastor Gary. Okay, let's go back to the donkey that talked. <laughs> there is a donkey that talked. I mean, come on. When you read that, you come to terms, you get saved. I remember back when I got saved, I was, I was like, how old were we, Kimmy? We were 28 when we got saved, right? And, uh, and 31 when I quit drinking. It's a different story. Anyway, but, but, uh, but we, 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 we get to know Jesus. You come to terms with Jesus is Lord, and I need to get saved. And all that. Okay, okay. And then you get into the Bible because everybody says, oh, you've got to read the Word, trust the Word. So you start there in Genesis like I did because that's the first page of the book. So you start, and you start reading through, and a donkey talked. Oh, really? And your mind goes, huh? A donkey Talking, yes, yes, it's just so high. And then you read on a little further and you get, well, a guy threw an axe head into the water and it floated. Well, I don't know. I grew up on a farm in southern Manitoba and I've thrown lots of things into the water. I ain't never seen nothing float back to the surface again. Come on. And so your mind goes, hey, hey, Gary, that can't be possible. But you have to stop and say, well, no, in the natural, it's not possible because gravity and all this stuff, no, it's not possible. But Jesus said it. So I'm going to make a choice to believe something something that I, my mind, my natural wisdom says is impossible, but my Jesus, who is the God of the impossible, come on, says it happened. I'm just going to believe it because I trust him, not because I understood how he did it. <laughs> I'm just trusting him. How about the, 
read on a little farther and you get to the place where Joshua is fighting the battle. Moses is there with Aaron and her. When Moses would lift his hands, Joshua would win the battle. When he put his hands down, he'd be loose in the battle. And then the, the, they come into the end of the day and the battle wasn't over yet. So, so, so they, they, God says, well, I'll take care of it. I'll just make the day a little longer for you. And he caused the sun to stand still. Now you stop and think about that. For one battle of a Christian, one, one, one battle of one of his sons at a time, God says, oh, they're going to need a little more time here to win this battle, so I'll just cause this day to be a little bit longer, and he causes the sun to stand still. I mean, all of the, all of the solar system, all of the universe, and all of the universes that the Hubble satellite is following, all had to come to a standstill because God says, we need a little more time, boys. Let's just put everything on hold for an hour or two. Let your mind try to grab a hold of that, that our God is that big and that powerful that in a moment of time he can stop, cause all of the universes <laughs> to just stop for a moment for one of his sons. Our God is an awesome God, the God of the impossible. And if you could just by, cho by, by simply choosing, not by understanding, how did he, I don't know. I don't know how he did, but man, our God, how big and how powerful if he did that. Like just, you just stop and think. If he did that, whoa, nothing would be impossible if he did that. Then in another place, he said, well, there was a man that was swallowed by a fish, and then he was spit up on the shores of destiny and lived to tell about it. Whoa. Really? Yeah, yeah, it's right here. In word. You believe that? Well, yeah, actually, I do. Why? Have you seen that? No, I haven't seen anything like that before. <laughs> But Jesus said it happened. Another place, Jesus spit in the ground, made a spitball of mud, pushed it into somebody's eyes, and their eyes were healed. How many believe that story happened? How many are willing to go downtown with me this afternoon? Let's find some people having eye troubles. You want to get rid of them glasses? Take them off a little bit. Here, I'm going to push this in your Oh, Lord, Jesus, come on. Your mind just goes, no, 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 it can't be. Yet Jesus did it. Come on. The Bible says that Peter walked on water. How many is willing to go down to the river with me today and test that theory out? Our minds go, no, 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 that's impossible. But yet one man did by faith. He walked on water. Lazarus rose from the dead. And a young lady got pregnant, had a son, and was still a virgin. No, 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 that's impossible. That couldn't happen. Yeah, it did. It all seems so impossible to our natural mind. But once we come to terms with it, once we come to terms with all this stuff that says, my mind can't grab a hold of that. But we come to terms and say, well, I, I don't have to understand it. I just have to choose to believe it because Jesus said it. And once our mind comes to terms with what we seem, what seems to be impossible, <laughs> and we get past this need to understand. So we, we, we have this human nature need that we, ha we have to understand something before we believe it. But if we could get past that and say, no, no, I don't have to understand it anymore. It's beyond my comprehension. I can't understand it. So I have to make a choice. Is this a liar talking to me? Is this a crazy person that wrote the book? Well, no, no, not a liar, not crazy people. So whether I understand it or not, it's... I'm going to choose to believe. And when we get past needing to understand before we believe, we can come to terms with the impossible. We're then positioned for the probable. If God can do that, then probably my problem <laughs> 
is small. If God can cause all the universe to stand still just to give one of his sons a little more time to win his battle, what can God do for you, O oh Lord Jesus? My problem's not that big. I don't need all the universe to stand still for a minute, but I could li- use a little help to win some of the battles that I have. I'm like, come on, come on. So we accept things that we understand pretty quick. Even the whole concept of salvation we understand. We, we, our mind can grab a hold of, of a father that forgives his kids of all of our sins and failures. We can comprehend that. We can understand it because we do it to people we love all the time. We're always for, forgiving our kids. And, we, you know, our kids hurt us. I'm sure my kids hurt us through the years. But I don't, I don't think of it. I, I don't, I, it. I'm not dwelling on it. I mean, the Bible says that love covers the multitudes of sins. And it literally means it digs a hole and buries it. And, and so I, I'm sure my kids hurt me through the years. But I don't remember. I don't think about it. I love them. I don't, I don't care. It's all, all in the past. So when I think of God the Father that loves you and I enough to forgive us of our our sins. I've got a precedence. My mind works. It says, well, you'll forgive your kids. Why wouldn't the father forgive his kids? And we'll go, yeah, that's logical. I understand that. So I can accept that. So we don't struggle with salvation or eternity or be f- forgiven by the father because we've done it ourselves. So it's, it's logical. It's understandable. Our mind goes, yes, you can receive that. So here's the thing. We can receive eternity that way because we can understand it. But the same God says, I can heal your body. Ooh, well, now, now, now that I, I, I haven't been able to do that for my kids. Ah, now it's, well, well, how would that work, God? And we start to struggle with it when, when oh, I can accept my salvation because that I understand. But healing my body? Whoa, whoa I don't know. I, I, that God could break the addictions off of my life in one moment of time. I could be set free of alcohol. I could be set free of drugs. I could be set free. Well, for me, I've seen that. I got delivered of alcohol. My brother got t- delivered of cocaine. I, I've seen that. I got great faith for that kind of stuff. But, it, it, but it's a different... You, We can understand salvation, but we need to be able to see and experience some of these other things. So, But God says, no, no, just accept it the same way. You believe for your salvation, believe I can heal your body. I can break that addiction. I can cause a financial miracle to happen right now today. Come on, you don't have to struggle when you're a child of God. He says, I caused all the universe to stand still so one of my sons could win his battle. And he's willing to do that for you. He'll move heaven and earth if he has to when you put your trust in your God and you get past your understanding and put all your trust in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on. God is willing to do anything it takes because he already gave us his son. How much more would we ask of our God? He said, I'll heal your body. I'll break those addictions. I can cause a financial miracle. I can restore a family. Come on, you might have some divisions in a family between you and your kids or your grandchildren or cousins or grandpa, grandpa, whoever it might be. You might have it and say, oh, man, I think it's impossible. We're so divided. We're fighting over things. God says, I can restore that. Come on, our God can do anything. He says, I can restore that family, and I can release so many blessings into your life that you won't have room to hold it if you put your trust in me. Come on, that's what the Bible says. And we look, oh, come on. And we look at it and we say, oh, God, I don't know how that's going to happen. I've never experienced that where there's been so many blessings. I didn't have room to hold it. I've never experienced that before. God says, no, no, I'm just going to tell you. (laughs) Come on. That's what the Word says. It's up to you whether you want to believe it or not. And if we say, well, I'll believe what I understand, then God says, then you're limiting what I can do in your life. And I say, okay, I'm going to come to terms with the impossible and say, well, God says that he'll pour out such a blessing. We won't have room to hold it. I'm just going to go, bring it on, Jesus. I don't know how. I don't need to understand. I don't care how you do it. I'm just ready to receive in Jesus' name. Heal my body. Fill up my bank account. Restore my family. Cause me to rise into destiny. Cause heaven and earth to stand still if you need to, God. I don't care how it gets done. I'm just ready to receive it in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, somebody. Lord, the song we sang, The Waymaker. (laughs) It's a great song. 
even when I don't see it, he's working. When I don't even understand it, he's still working. And God says he's going to bless my life. I'll pour out such blessing on you. You won't have room to hold it. I just simply got to receive it by, oh, Lord Jesus. But it's harder. Receiving salvation, you go, yeah, I understand it. It's harder. But, it, but it's harder when we're talking about healings and if you've never seen it, we've got some people in Life Church and the organization like, like John and Laz. They've done crusades all over the world and, and they see it all the time. They're seeing these people, blind eyes getting open and stuff, and they tell us stories about it. So they've got huge faith in that area because they've seen it so much. Come on. But it's harder if you've never seen it, it's harder if you haven't. So we go back to that, well, I'll believe it when I see it thing. But listen to what Jesus said to people in his day. He asked him a question here, Mar uh, Matthew 9, verse 2. Behold, they brought to him a paralytic lying on a bed. Jesus saw their faith. What did he see? Their faith. He said to the paralytic, son, be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven you. And at once some of the scribes said within themselves, this man blasphemes. But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, oh, that's a scary thing right there. Come on, just think about that. Jesus, knowing your thoughts. <laughs> you know, oh, Lord, Jesus, I, I was just going to head off on a rabbit trail right there. But it, just let me just say this. I really think that Jesus isn't just listening to our words when he knows our thoughts. He knows what we really believe. Be a good cheer. Your sins are forgiven. And once some of the scribes said within themselves, this man blasphemes. But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, why do you think evil in your hearts? Oh, Lord, that would preach right there. I'm having trouble getting past it. Jesus knew what they were thinking and says, you got evil in your heart. Knowing their thoughts said, why do you think evil in your heart? And he says so. So what do you think is easier for me to do? <laughs> for me to say, your sins are forgiven you, or to say, rise up and walk? And that's a good question for you and I when we're struggling with our faith. Ask ourselves, what is easier? For Jesus to save my soul, or Jesus to heal my body of cancer? Which is easier for our God? What's just easier for our God, to deal with our financial situations or to save our souls? And the answer, obviously, with Jesus, the point he was trying to get across is, it's all easy for me. It's not harder for Jesus to heal our body than it is to save our souls through eternity. It's just harder for us to understand it. It's harder for us to accept it by faith because we can understand forgiveness, but we can't understand how this body that the doctor just said is full of cancer or full of something that, that's, that's terminal. We, we don't understand how that can be turned around and dealt with. And because we don't understand it, our mind struggles with receiving it because and we limit God because we're trying to understand instead of just saying, you know what? I don't need to understand it, Jesus. Because if you have the power to save my soul and preserve me through eternity, you have the power to take care of me right now while I'm here. Because here's the thing. Do you realize as a born-again, Bible-thumping, pew-jumping child of the living God that this is the closest to hell you're ever going to be. Come on. This is the closest to hell you're ever going to be, this natural world that we live in. You, it's not downhill from here. It's all uphill. You are living your eternal life right now. You're just contained in a physical body that's weak and frail and a limited mind, but it's all uphill from here, man. man it gets better and better and better, and no matter what happens, come on. This, this is the worst it ever gets when you're a Christian. Hallelujah. And even this is good. Come on. I'm even enjoying this part, and it gets gooder and gooder as the days go on. Hallelujah, Jesus. 
So we just have to come to terms with that, that just because it seems harder for us doesn't mean that it's harder for him. Remind yourself, oh, yes, he's the guy that caused the whole universe to stand still to give his son, one son, more time to win a battle. My God is an awesome God. He can do anything. Hallelujah, Jesus. It's us that has a problem. And I think God put all the stuff in the Bible, all these accounts in the Bible, the donkey that talked and the virgin that had you, I think he put it all there just so it causes our natural mind to come to a place where it can't comprehend because he wants us to know that we cannot comprehend the fullness of the God that we serve. He said, I just put all these stories in here and well, you've got to come to terms with the fact that our God created a world that has natural laws of physics and all this health and all this stuff, but he created it, but he's not limited by it because nothing is impossible for our God. He created it, but he's not limited by it. Hallelujah. He can cross the boundaries of what we think is impossible anytime he chooses. He can step across the line, say, that's that's impossible to natural man. Let me take care of that for you, son. Let me take care of that for you, daughter, because nothing is impossible for me. You let me look. Oh, Lord, Come on, how many love servant Jesus? Come on. Uh. And when the God that we see in our faith is a God that has no limitations, we can then live in the realms of possibilities. Kim and I live in the realms of possibilities. All the time we preach from the realms of possibilities. We minister from the realms of possibilities because our God, hallelujah, nothing is impossible. So by faith I can say, I will see what I have chose to believe in Jesus' name. Come on, say that to yourself. I will see what I choose to believe in Jesus' name. One more time. I will see what I choose to believe in Jesus' name. So how do I build this life of seeing what I believe? Well, number one, we need to embrace that. Here's the thing. You need to embrace that every thought about God is somehow connected to God. It's, it's, it's God that's doing it. Well, how do we know that? Well, because your natural mind or the devil is certainly not going to be encouraging you to think about God. The devil and natural world all around us is doing everything they can to stop us from thinking about God. So every time I start thinking about God, it's probably God that's talking to me. Hallelujah. So every thought that I have about God is probably God. So we just start by that. If I want to live a supernatural life, every time I'm walking down the street just minding my own business and I start thinking about God and I start thinking about ministry, I could, oh, hi, Jesus, you're talking to me again. Hallelujah. Because the devil's not going to get your attention and get you to focus on God. He's putting everything out there to try to get stop you from thinking about God. The whole world is trying to stop us from thinking about God. So when I start thinking about God, I know it's God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Logic. Every time I feel drawn to him, how many know the sin-filled human nature draws us away from God? So every time I'm having a moment, and I'm sure you have moments like I have moments where you just feel drawn to God. You know, not, not just during a worship service or thing, not just in church, but there's just times you're just sitting there and you just feel drawn to God and you can get weepy and you can get really, you just feel drawn to God. Well, it's probably God. The devil ain't going to do that to you. It's probably God. Oh, Hallelujah. And then we need to practice that God really dwells with us already. As soon as I accepted Jesus as my Savior, the Spirit of God came and dwelt in me. That same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in me. That same Spirit that hovered over creation and brought order out of chaos dwells in me. In me. Greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. If we just stop and we just meditate upon that and we say, well, God dwells within me. So when I'm going around and I'm just, I'm going to talk to Jesus like he's really there. 
I'm going to talk to Jesus like he really is with me all the time. And I'm not only going to talk to him, I'm going to introduce him to my friends. <laughs> I'm going to talk about him all the time. Dwight and Donna, as Pastor Jerry said, have been, been dear friends of ours for 27 years now. So we're, if you haven't met them, spend some time meeting them. But I'd love to introduce you to my friends because they're my friends. They're my dear friends. So well, I come along and say, well, this is, this is Dwight. This is Donna. And my other friend, this is Jesus. He's with me too. Come on. And he's been walking with me since 1984. Let me introduce you to my friend Jesus. See, we don't think of Jesus as somebody real that's doing life with us. Come on. It's still theology. It's still something we're trying to grasp and comprehend. Instead of just saying, hey, he dwells with me and he's with me all the time. He's my friend. How oh, what a friend we have in Jesus. And he, yeah, we, he's with me and I want you to know my friend because he's a good guy. Come on, somebody. And we need to... We need to just start living our life as though he really is with us. That we talk, when we talk, he's actually listening. Oh, Lord, I'm not sure you're hearing me. Oh, he's listening. (laughs) He may not like what he's hearing, but he's listening. See, I, I, I know this is an issue for Christians because... If we really believe that he was with us, this holy and pure, awesome, powerful God that can do anything in our life, I wouldn't go to some of the things that I go to. I wouldn't do some of the things I do. I wouldn't talk some of the times the way we talk if we really believe this holy God was present with us all the time. You know, I just had another thought. These, these thoughts come to me. If the only time that we really start talking to this holy God that dwells within us is when we're in crisis, then logic again tells me that we're probably going to be in crisis quite often because that's the only time we talk to him. (laughs) He's all right. The only only time you're going to pay attention to me is when you're in crisis, I guess. You're going to have to be in crisis because I want to talk to you here, boy. But why do we wait until we have to? Why don't we just nurture a relationship with this God that's so big and so awesome and so powerful we can't even comprehend him? Why? We're not going to limit him. Jesus, just lead me on. Just guide me and lead me, Jesus. I'm glad you're with me. You wake up in the morning. This morning, Jesus, what are we going to do today? Hallelujah. Where are we going? Who are we going to talk to? Come on. And and we just talk to him like he's real, that he hears us, and we introduce him to his friends, and that he's listening to us as we talk, That that, that and all we got to do is just respond to his leading with Whatever he nudges us to do through the day, which is, okay, I got it. I got it. I'll do that. Yeah, praise God. And when I get convinced that he dwells in me, then I can say with a confidence, no matter what the circumstances, no matter what I'm facing, my God is able He's a way maker when there seems to be no way. Come on. I, I, when I know him, when I've come to terms, when I'm convinced that he dwells with me, I can say, I know he's here. I know he's got me. He'll lead me and guide me. Come on. Maybe I can't see it right now, but I'm going to believe it anyways, that even if I can't see it, he's working. Even if I can't feel it, he's working. I'm just simply going to believe it before I see it because I believe that I will see what I believe. Come on, somebody. Oh. Lord Jesus. So I can prophesy my victory before I see it coming. A prophecy is not a testimony of what happened yesterday. A prophecy is what you believe is going to happen today. (laughs) So I can prophesy my victory even before I see it, not because I understand it, not because I know how it's going to happen, but I know the one. (laughs) I know him, and he tells me that he'll heal my body. He tells me he'll get me through, so I can prophesy my victory before I even see it because I know him. And it's like Moses getting up on the rock at the the Red Sea where he's got the, the, the impossible sea in front of him. He's got the soldiers coming behind, and they were in an impossible situation that he would never 
understand. But something inside of that man caused his faith to rise, and he took his rod of authority, and he stood up on that rock, and he says, Behold the salvation of our God. You watch what our God will do on our behalf. And I want to deposit that kind of faith in this house today, that no matter what circumstance you're facing, that you're facing something inside rises up in you. And that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead starts to stir within you and gives you a confidence before you see it, before you understand it, to say, you know, it looks like I'm in an impossible situation, but behold, you keep your eyes on me and you watch what my God is about to do. He's about to make a way where there seems to be no way in Jesus' name. Oh, oh, oh. Lord Jesus, he's a good God. Hallelujah. I know he's here. So I can prepare for my breakthrough today. I don't have to wait for it to come. I can prepare for it because I can see it by faith. I can believe it before I can see it. But I will see what I have believed in Jesus' name. Nothing is impossible for my God. So I'm just going to do what he tells me to do. I've come to terms with it in 30 years of ministry. I don't, I don't have to have it figured out. Every time we start thinking we've got it figured out, it goes bad. <laughs> it's much better for me to just acknowledge right up front, I don't have it figured out. I don't know. If there's anything, you know, when I started off, here, let me just, another thought just came to me. When Kim and I started off in ministry, we thought we knew everything. Okay, I thought I knew everything. <laughs> Leave you out of this. But you start off and you've got this confidence in, well, I, you know, we've taken the Bible courses, we've read the Bible, we've, we've been taught, we've been trained, we've we got this figured out. And God just goes, oh, really? Oh, really? So here we are 30 years later, and I have more questions now than when I started. That's what knowledge does to you, the godly knowledge, is you end up with more questions when you started. So I have no, back, you, you, you'd had me in this house 30 years ago, you asked me any question, I had an answer. I could give you the scripture, I, could, I had an answer. Now you ask me a question, most times go, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. My natural mind says it's impossible. You, you're in trouble, man. You got to, what's your face? That's impossible. But I know a guy. Anybody watch uh, Pawn Stars? Is it the, not porn, pawn? The, just, just checking. <laughs> the pawn, the, the, what are they, the buy and sell trade thing. Anyway, anyway everybody comes in there. And, oh, I've got this cup for sale. It's from ancient Egypt or something. And they go, well, I don't know if that's a pawn shop. Yes. Yeah. So he says, I don't know. I don't know. But I know a guy. Can I bring a friend? I know a guy that can tell me what it's worth. And that's you and I as Christians. People come to with a problem and say, well, I don't know. But I know a guy. Let me introduce you to a guy that can tell you what you're worth or what you're. Oh, no, come on. I know a guy. I know a guy. He's a good guy. So I'm just going to do what he tells me to do. I don't have to have it all figured out. I'm just going to do it because that's what he told me to do. So let's go back to where we started as we end. Matthew 16, 15. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Do you know when I was a young Christian working in the mining industry in Tumblr Ridge, B.C.? I was uh, running crews there in, in management and operations. And uh, on night shifts, we worked 12-hour night shifts. I had to go down to the, the train. That was, I set that up. You hear the train whistle? I, heard, I set that up. Just Thank you, CN or whoever you are out there. I set that up. Perfect timing. Anyway, I, I had to go down to rail loadout where they loaded the coal and sent it off to, to Japan. And uh, so I, I'd be driving down. It's it about eight miles down there. And in the mountains of British Columbia... And I'd be driving down the road, pitch black. You can't see nothing dark out there. And I'd stop in the middle of the highway because, like Peter, tell me, read there, Peter says, I can't help but preach the gospel. 
Something inside of him grew that says, I can't contain this if I tried. That I, I can't help it. I got to preach. I got to tell somebody about it. And that was me. I'd, I'd be driving down the road in the middle of the night, just pitch black. I'd, I'd stop the truck. I'd get out of my truck, and I'd stand in the middle of the pavement in the pitch black darkness in the mountains of British Columbia, and I'd be preaching just like I'm preaching here today, and I'd be calling for salvations and casting out devils and preaching because something inside me was burning and growing, And if I didn't preach it, I think I'm going to explode. I can't help but preach the gospel. I tell you, you know you're called to ministry when you get to the place where you can't help it. You have to do it. It just won't stop. Wakes you up in the middle of the night. You wake up in the morning, it's there. In the middle of the night, it's always there. And it keeps building and building and building until you say, I can't take it anymore. I have to preach the gospel. And I'd get out of my truck and preach into the darkness of night up into the mountains And so I'm sure there's some Holy Ghost moose, (laughs) grizzly bears, mountain lions, they know Jesus. They've heard because this crazy preacher standing out in the darkness, it says preach to every creature. (laughs) I did that. And he who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow. Slap somebody beside you and say, will follow. These signs will follow those who understand. We got that scripture. We we put that up, Matthew 16, 17. These signs will follow those that understand. No. These signs will follow those that have it all figured out. No. These signs will follow the best preachers? No. These signs will follow the select few that have a calling to be an evangelist and lay hands on the sick and see them recover, cast out devil? No. These signs will follow those who believe. Those who believe. In my name, Jesus says, not in your understanding, not in your Bible degree, not in your calling, not because mama said, not, be, not in my name and my name alone, Jesus says, you'll cast out demons, you'll speak with new tongues, you'll take up serpents, and if you drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt you. And you will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. These signs will follow those who believe. Those who believe. I don't know how it's going to happen. Any problem you could present today, I go, I don't know. But here's the good thing. I don't have to know. I don't have to understand so you asked me to pray for you, and, and, I, and you said, well, Pastor, how is that gonna ha- how's it going to work? I don't know, but I believe. I'm a blessed man because I can believe before I see it. I don't know how it's going to happen. I'm just going to do it because Jesus told me to do it. And I believe that if I do what he tells me to do, I will see what I believe I'm just going to do my part by faith. And the Bible says he does the rest. Look at the verse 19 and 20. Mark 16. Then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up in heaven, sat down at the right hand of God, and they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them. I love that. You're not on your own. When you walk by faith, the Lord works with you. The Lord working with him, confirming the word through the accompanying sign. Our job, oh Lord Jesus, our job is to take action according to what we believe. And if we'll do our part, he says, I'll do mine. I'll confirm what you say with the accompanying signs, and you will see what you believe in Jesus' name. Today, I'd like to pray for you. I'd like Dwight and Donna can join me, Kimmy join me, and we want to pray for you today. But I don't want to pray just for your need. If, uh, is it Barb that was on the keyboards? 
So Barbara, would, would you play some beautiful music that's lovely? I don't want us just to pray for your need. I mean, we, we can do that. That's, I, I, but I want us to even go beyond just your need. I'd like to pray for you today for something that you think is absolutely impossible. Something that you say, well, this, according to my natural understanding, this shouldn't happen. That job I want, the, the financial breakthrough, the health issue, whatever it might be, the family issue. So, I, it's, it, Pastor, this, this one's impossible. I don't know if you can pray for this one. I, that's the one I want to pray for. Come on. I want to just, uh, not only to meet your need, of course we'll pray a blessing upon you and that your faith would be ready to receive the outpouring of God's blessing. Sure we will. But I want to pray for you for something that you are believing leaving, you're seeing, but you, you say, well, that's impossible. And I want to join with you today by faith and bring this issue to the guy that caused heaven to stand still, to come on, to give one of his sons a little more time to win the battle. Come on. He, that's the God I want to talk to today. The God that caused a, a young teenage girl to have a baby and yet she's still a virgin. That's the God we want to talk to. The God that made a donkey talk. The God that allowed Peter to walk on water. Defied all the natural creation because our God is an awesome God. And even though he created all things, he's not limited by it in Jesus' name. That's the God I want to pray, for, pray with. You pray too, and I want you to meet my friend. We'll join together because I know he's your friend too. But let's not just, let's not agree based on our understanding. Let's believe not what we can do, but what he can do. Let's believe for something impossible today in Jesus' name. Amen. So, Dwight and Donna, come and join me. They've been our dear friends doing ministry with us all over the world for 27 years. And Kimmy, and as Barb creates some wonderful background, if you'd like us to lay hands on you and pray for you today and, and come into agreement beyond something. I don't care what it is you're believing for. Don't worry whether I can understand it or not. You just tell me what you're believing for, and we're going to come into agreement together today and ask God to move heaven and earth to cause that miracle to come to pass in Jesus' name, because our God is an awesome God. Amen.